We are on Overgrove, and here is our Terran player in the red trunks playing for Cascade One Bet. He is Strelok. And his Ukrainian opponent playing for Monolith Pro Gaming Team. He is EXE. And EXE um, had some nice uh, little drop antics in that previous game. Also a, a TVT. Lots of Terrans going on tonight. Um, we talked about this before, but I have not seen so many Terrans in ages. Good times for SC2 that we that we actually get so many Terrans here in Europe. Kind of want to have a return to the good old days when Slayers was still on top of their game and are actually in the game playing this game and like when they came out with that new. Um, Blue Flame, was it Blue Flame? I think it was Blue Flame Hellion build for MLG and they just rocked that whole tournament. That was pretty insane. Good times. Well, also pr pretty unfair times, but still, good times. <laughs> okay, a little bit of an earlier guess for our EXE. Kind of looks like he's uh, playing the style that his opponent brought to the table last game. Start out a little bit later here with this gas, but also Overgrowth is a completely different map. You see Stellox scouting out a little bit earlier. And he is of course, um, due to that later gas timing, a little bit further on his barracks. And no scout coming out of EXE so far. Definitely wants to have all of his SCVs still in the gas, still in the minerals. And we'll go scout out with that SCV once the barracks is actually finished. Well, meanwhile, almost made it to EXE's base, and he's producing a Reaper behind this. Interesting to see. And there we go, scouts out the factory right away, so he doesn't even need to scout out the gas. Could go in there just to check if um, all workers are still in there. But usually if you do produce that factory and you're not going for like straight up um, a straight up only Hellion production, you want to keep all your workers in the gas. And in actuality, EXE going for a second gas already. So some really crazy uh, gas play here. Could possibly go for a, a mech follow up afterwards, but we'll have to see how he deals with the Reaper first. Almost halfway across the map. And he only has two marines to defend so far. Third one is in production though, so I don't think uh, that Strelok is doing all too much with that Reaper. He's probably just gonna move in, uh, check what else is going on, thereby save himself um, that scat, and still have that Reaper available if he's not uh, if he's not too bad on this control, which I doubt he is. I mean, it's Strelok. Come on, he's been playing SC2 forever. He's some solid control and um, some solid decision making as well. Just now going for a second gas and the factory of course is also in production. Did build that reactor and I would expect a swap once that factory is finished just to get a couple of Hellions out. By the way, uh, Reaper did get a couple of shots in but of course due to the combat drugs those helped him to get back up. And maybe he can move back in there but with three marines eh, it's gonna be tough. And that's some nice spreading here. Wow, EXE really knows the stuff. Almost perfect splitting. A little bit too far. Oh, wow, the Reaper actually gets past them and gets to see everything. You can check the gas, how much gas is still in there. He's gonna lose the Reaper. Um, should... Did he, did he see the second gas? Nope, he didn't see the second gas. But he can pretty much assume what's going on by seeing the tech lab on the band uh, on the um, starport and seeing that it's actually wobbling you see okay something is researching in there so it's got to be a banshee and we're seeing a reaction right away there is viking production coming out of the starport he's getting two missile turrets one in the main and one in this production line probably will get a third yep there's a third right on his natural so, perfect spot uh, for Strelok. And yeah, he's in a good spot to defend this. A little bit unfortunate for EXE, since it did put him behind a little bit uh, here in the economic game. Let's see if that Banshee is gonna make do and kill a couple of SCV for him. No, no way to get in there. And there's the Viking. Uh, he, he's at least gonna bait out a scan here, but he knows, okay, there's gonna be a missile turret in the, natural, in the main as well. 
So that Banshee's not gonna do all that much. Did find a safe spot, so he's looking for that bait, and there it is. But with the Viking and two Marines... Oh, actually, nope, he's trapped, he's trapped, he can't get Pi. Oh, wow, did he actually manage to do it? 22 energy, still that Banshee. And a little bit surprising, but Stratok's gonna go for Banshees of his own. Even though everything has been scouted out, he's... Um, at EXE, he's seen the starport, he's seen um, a tech lab, and he's seen the wobbling. Uh, Moon Knight, I don't know if Pili Pili has played today, I don't think I've seen his name um, in the list, but you can check, just type um, exclamation mark uh, bracket, and then you can get to the bracket, and if you click um, players uh, on top, then you can check who was actually checked in. And that's the next Banshee, it's just gonna be a Banshee war for them. Um, couple of Hellions still waiting here in the bushes, I don't know if you can make them out. Um, there's one right hidden <laughs> right there. And this is a nice move here by EXE, just uh, getting rid of, of those Hellions and getting map control back. There's the Banshee for Strelok, and... Uh, Raven is available, a couple of Marines available, and even some Vikings in here. So let's have a look at their... Um, Actual compositions uh, looks kind of all over the place for both of them right now. I mean, EXE is still working with that um, Destiny Cloud Fist. Not gone into any more production, which will start to hurt him here pretty soon. He should go for some more production buildings, otherwise, um, he's gonna rack up those minerals. But he, he's still in a semi-good spot. He's 10 workers behind, which, uh, mind you, is not good, but also he hasn't lost all that much yet. Oh, and as I'm talking about that, Bizzle Turret not quite finished, and that Banshee is racking up the kills. Five kills already. That's a Corporal Banshee for you. And she can get away. Is a Viking here? Nice job, actually, man. Could possibly get a first shot off if a Viking from EXE ever goes to chase. But this does look like a pretty decent army. Let's see if uh, Stella can defend. So far he only has Hellions and lots of them. Blue Flame is not quite finished. But so that's not a perfect army to defend the Onslaught uh, from EXE. And they're moving in. They're moving in. Ooh, the Missile Turret is not gonna get finished here. But just a single Banshee is not gonna work it. Wow. Siege checks in the back, not even sieged up, but it's only SCVs working against them so far. But the Hellions, they're closing in, getting rid of one siege tank, second siege tank in the yellow, but looks like FX EXE can make it here. He's bursting through, there's a single siege tank on top of it. But the Banshee's moving into position, not quite focusing the siege tank just yet. Oh, if he can get rid of more of these siege tanks... Nope, he can't! EXE actually makes it into the semi-finals! Wow! We were talking about, like, I was talking to EXE before and he was like, oh, well, Strelok, it's, it's gonna be a tough fight, but man, he's just shown some amazing play here. Not bad at all. He picked the perfect timing, I mean, he still had that pretty big army up, he just uh, got rid of the Banshee in his, in his natural, he did a little bit of damage, not too much, but, like, nothing hit his main army, and he just had a like a massively better composition. Everything that Strelok had prepared was good for a like a regular um, bio army, but what EXE put out on the field was just like Destiny Cloudfish. It was a little bit of everything, and he had a lot of. Um, um, oh, never mind. We're starting with best of threes already. Sorry about that. So there's gonna be a second game, but um, <laughs> uh, got a little bit ahead of myself there. Um, but nevertheless, um, I mean, EXE just had a vastly better composition here. Um, siege tanks were kept alive for a um, long enough time, and that, that was pretty insane. Alright, so next game is about ready to go. Yeah, there we are. Countdown has started, and we're loading into Nimbus. So that's the next map for you. And I don't think we've... have we seen... yeah, we've seen Nimbus tonight. Nimbus was the one uh, we saw before this match where uh, we had that little EXE backdoor 
uh, backdoor drop shenanigans where he tried to uh, drop on the right side and then had a little sneaky drop on the left side and kind of yeah outplays outplayed his opponent by just um, essentially um, surprising him all the way. All right, let's do it. Here we are. He's down one game. He needs to win this one if he wants to make it into the semifinals. He is playing for Cascade One Bet. It is Strelok. And his opponent, as the Blue Terran, the top right corner, playing for Monolith Gaming. It is EXE. And wow, that guy's just on fire tonight. Now, can I actually have this in here somehow? I don't know, for some reason it's not working. Hmm. Sucks. So just imagine there's a... <laughs> just imagine there's a best of three uh, indicator somewhere. So this is a best of three, and then I think afterwards is also a best of three, and then afterwards is still a best of three. So something along those lines. So yeah, I do hope you guys are enjoying the cast, and if you do, be sure to leave a follow uh, just below the screen. And I'm um, yeah, I promised to uh, get back into a StarCraft 2 casting. I did actually promise that uh, quite some time ago, and finally following up on it. So that's um, mostly StarCraft 2 and Heroes of the Storm content for me. Um, casting and a little bit of playing as well. Oh, I don't know. Like. You, you guys wanted to see me uh, play Heroes of the Storm a little bit, but um, I think uh, casting is just more my game. <laughs> okay, that's uh, Strelok going for the early gas. So we see a little bit of a switcheroo while EXE is going for the early expand. And it's again in that spot where it's a little bit tight situation for him. Could be surprised by um, some drop, drop play coming out of Strelok. We'll have to see, Strelok is going for an early factory, he still has all his workers in gas, so he could be going for the gas play, uh, for, for the uh, medivac drop. And there's a second gas coming out. So, it's uh, either some <laughs> early, it could be Banshee play, or it could be uh, just a preparation for, um, for tech. Uh, tech focus style. First barracks coming out of EXE. Um, in the previous game, he put out a lot of barracks before going into his factory, like a lot later. But it worked out quite well for him. And the SCV, I don't know what it actually did up there. He probably tried to get back in, or maybe, he, well, maybe he hit back there just to um, catch the incoming SCV and then kind of go around him. That's the first Hellion in production for Strelok. And the starport already, already almost finished. He needs to get rid of that SCV though, and looks like he can. Locking a little bit. Oh, this is. Wow, this was incredibly tough. Oh, he did see the starport. He did see the starport, and immediately Strelok hits that cloak button. Go straight for the Banshee, and wise choice. If you're going for these tech-heavy tech, tech heavy builds, you want to have some kind of defense uh, at home, and this is why he's going for um, the Widow Mine here, right here. So that makes perfect sense, and EXE reacting right on, going straight for double refinery. Uh, leaves him a little bit low on the mineral income, but he needs those. He needs that much gas right now. He needs something um, to get rid of the Banshees, and uh, he's probably got to go into Ravens um, once he does have enough gas up, but for now he's gonna make do with uh, some missile turrets, and they should be coming out here pretty soon. There's the first one. Second one in production or mineralite for the main, but no, not yet. Banshee's almost in position. Cloak is up pretty soon, and ooh, perfect play so far for Axie. Um, Three missile turrets. I would assume one is uh, in the production. Nope. One's in the mineral line and one's over here. Where's the last one? Oh, yeah. One is in the production. 
some really good split um, split here on the missile turrets. Good positioning. Ah, there is a small spot where uh, the Banshee can still hit. And over here, yeah, that's the perfect positioning for the missile turret. So you see, he's gonna be safe. But still not losing all, uh, anything on this Banshee either. And wrecked up two kills, so not too bad. Maybe you can get another... Maybe you can get another one, you know, maybe one, one or two more kills. Yeah, that's a single spot where you can still hit. But EXE is doing a good job just uh, migrating his SCVs around. And of course, the range on the missile turrets uh, for decloaking is a lot higher than um, his missile range. So once those marines are actually in place, they can defend the Banshee, of course. But finally, Strelok is going for his follow-up. Um, He's producing more factories. Uh, he also went for a Raven here. So we will see some mech play coming out of Strelok. There's the third command center. Second command center w was produced a lot later than EXE. So EXE has a nice, nice, decent timing window. Ooh, wow. Double cancel here. Those Marines uh, not doing all that much. Yeah, he is gonna go for another a missile turret just to get rid of that Banshee. Some really good harassment coming out of Strelok. And mind you, he's not doing all that much damage, but um, this is just screwing with your opponent's head and just keeping them, like keeping them on their toes, constantly having them um, micro stuff around. So really good options here for Strelok, and he's doing that with a single banshee behind this, going straight up uh, into mech play, um, getting um, a lot of aliens already, and going for the blue flame upgrade. So he's doing a similar style as last game, and I like that widow mine up front. So he knew, okay, Banshee, well, didn't do all that much damage, but my opponent also not moving out, so I can put that Widow Mine up front, be a little bit aggressive with it, and have it as an early indicator just to see when his opponent is moving out. Uh, EXE, on the other hand, he's going for Bio Style again. Um, so pretty much like the first game where we saw him. Going for straight up Bio. Um, right now, only uh, double medevac production, so he should probably get a couple more medevacs in there if he can. Third command center is in production. Um, Sterlux was a little bit earlier, but he mostly needed it for additional SCV production in the natural. And there's the drop. Drop is coming in. That's a lot of blue flame hellions. Wow! Some solid defense for Strelok. Single blue flame is going down. Those marines have combat shields, which helped a little bit, but wow, EXE just losing all of this drop. Might actually lose that medevac as well. Yep, he will. So some good defense for Strelok. Not that much was lost here, just six workers. Although six workers were actually killed by Strelok, by the Banshee. So resources lost vastly in favor of Strelok. And look at this army. Um, this is not too bad. Once he gets a couple more uh, siege tanks in there, he could actually go for some counter-aggression and try to keep AXE in his main base. Which is not too bad uh, for EXE since he still he can still try to drop, still try to deny that third. But eventually he will run out of resources. But let's see how that drop will do first. Oh, wow. <laughs> Strelok, he knows his stuff. Barracks on the right side, drop completely annihilated. Not gonna work. And EXE turns straight around, knows, okay, this is not gonna happen. And instead, I'll try to get my third established, which is uh, not gonna be easy. Oh, he faked out loading out. Okay, interesting. Still, I mean, Strelok is in a good position to defend all this. He has medevacs to react faster, and some preemptive loading here of his Hellbats. Gets the siege tanks in position, and wow, drop comes straight in. Oh, and wow, EXE loading straight on top of these siege tanks. I don't know if that's a good idea. Strelok still has reinforcements coming in from the back, and those Hellbats straight on top of EXE. Wow, he lost his entire army again, and will lose a lot of these uh, medevacs as well. That's the next one going down. Just two medevacs surviving. That's, wow, almost his entire army lost again. Three and a half thousand resources lost for EXE. Strelok just in an overwhelming position here. Uh, with the third running, with a lot of gas income, a lot of mineral income, and uh, just some really good army advantage. He does have a uh, cloak upgrade, he has blue flames, um, he has plus one upgrades now, and wow, looks like he's gearing up for a little bit of a late game plan here. Just now going for uh, the add-ons on his additional factories, and getting two, um, 
two sensor towers out just to scout out on the left side and have a little bit of scouting option on the right side as well. And those Vikings will enable him to stop these drop attempts uh, that EXE continues to put out. So I think this is this is the kind of style that EXE seems to like, just dropping all over the place. Which did work out quite well before uh, for him, but right now, I mean, Strelok, like his vulnerable time is kind of over as long... I mean, he has a lead right now, and a solid lead at that. Uh, 20 supply, um, he's catching up on the upgrades, um, he has some really good production facilities all over the place, so he's spending all of his money, um, he's spending all of his resources, and ooh, that's, that drop is still gonna do a little bit, but look at this, Strelok moving straight in there with his Hellbats, unloading, of course, they are unloading one at a time, so his army can still deal, still deal with this, Quite well. But Strelok lost quite a bit here as well. Unfortunately, this time around, uh, the attack on the right hand side didn't do all that much for EXE. So, yeah, he just continues to uh, lose way more resources, and Strelok is just a lot more cost effective in these fights. And he had his third a lot earlier. So that's the thing, I don't think that these uh, tactics for EXE, uh, EXE are playing out the way he wanted to. He had a little bit of a timing window to make something happen with those drops, but it's, it's not going to happen now. Not with uh, two sensor towers and Stalock having that um, mobile defense force uh, with a medevac and with the hellbats just reacting to those drops in time. There we go, EXE is going to try it one last time. I don't know if this is actually a good time, maybe he just faked it out. He did went over there with a couple of forces, but he's just turning back and forth. Um, he should probably wait for his 2-2 to finish, and maybe then he'll has a chance. He could also try to just try to out-expand Strelok, um, go for this, like a hidden expansion over here, just try to outproduce him somehow. And then it doesn't matter quite as much if you lose something. Oh look at those, a couple of Hellions made it in here. Uh, they're not gonna do all that much, um, as a matter of fact, nothing at all. Strelok, he's, he's still in there, he's still um, on three bases, not really um, not really crazy on taking the fourth, I mean he's already um, producing it here, but he could have gone for that for fourth way earlier if he wanted to. But finally moving out, he's almost maxed out. Does have that plus two uh, weapons upgrade ready, and Sea Chank production is just rolling out. That's a really good army for Strelok. And he has a lot of Hellbats loaded up in those Medivacs. And they're moving right on top of the army. Wow! Unloading everything right on top of the Medivac. Uh, right on top of the uh, Marines. And there's the GG. Strelok closes it out. There's a turnaround. 1 1 here between Strelok and EXE. Wow. Nice, nice turnaround for him. Really, really good job. And, uh, yeah, I expected an awesome series, and I'm getting an awesome series here. So, I don't know, it seems like EXE is kind of relying on these drops, maybe a little bit too much, to a point where Strelok knows, okay, if I defend these drops, I'm in a, in a good spot, I don't really need to do... Um, yeah, I don't really need to do anything else, I don't need to watch out for any other place, but I think EXE, he might have something else up his sleeve. Maybe he's going for something else instead. Maybe a switch to Mac as well. Uh, we've seen him do it before, so why not go for that Destiny Cloud Fist again? Uh, just barracks, factory, starport, apply a little bit of pressure, because there is a timing window we've seen in the first game where Strelok is incredibly vulnerable, because he always goes for these mass Hellions early on. And that's that's definitely a spot where EXE can capitalize on it and just uh, go and kill him. But, uh, I mean, Strelok did close it out now, so maybe he's gonna change things around. And our next map is going to be King Seon Station. One of those little bit weirder maps. But still, I, I like it. Gives some uh, interesting, interesting games. 
And here we have him. He just turned this whole thing around. It's 1-1 now. This one is winner takes it all. And he is our Red Terran spot in the top left corner playing for Cascade one bet. It is Strelok. And his opponent in the blue trunks playing for <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Monolith Gaming. Monolith Pro Gaming Team. EXE. Our Blue Terran. Why the heck can't I remember his team? Probably never heard of him before, that's why. But looks like they're quite new as well. Nope, don't have a don't have a date on there. Thought I read uh, 2014, but never mind. And that's the early guess again uh, for EXE. Nothing coming out of Strelok yet. There's the barracks, so he's not gonna go for that early gas play. So I hope you guys like that series. And I hope we get to see a really nice conclusion to it now. There's the barracks coming out of EXE and Strelok also finally going for his gas. Or what am I saying? Finally. He's going for a little bit of a later gas uh, compared to EXE. But it, it's still uh, good timing. And three workers in gas. Let's see. Uh, I would expect uh, Strelok to go for an early expand compared to EXE. But we'll have to see. Yep, he's already moving down. 200 minerals just banked up. That's the SDV that's gonna scout, so... He will have to send another one down there. And there's the Reaper. Okay. So not going for the command center just yet. Maybe we can... Maybe he can do something with this Reaper this time. Factories in production for EXE. And the SCV will move in, will almost see everything. The Reaper can then do a nice little follow up. And, ooh, did Strelok see everything? Yeah, he saw the factory, and that's all he needed to see. Second refinery is coming in as well. So, possibly Banshee play. Maybe uh, we'll see a return to the second game. Uh, first game, rather. And there we go, Strelok finally going for his command center. He really wanted to get that Reaper out first though. Uh, which will help him now, because he can save up a little bit more minerals and doesn't need to go for the scan. Oh, nice positioning on the Marines. We'll get rid of the Reaper, wow. Definitely not worth it for Strelok. He could have had that CC a lot earlier and he didn't scout any more than he already had. Starport got finished or got produced a little bit later on. So it wasn't scouted out by Sterlock, and neither was this tech lab. So he doesn't know anything about the Banshee player that's um, pretty sure, well, I'm pretty sure is coming coming out here. But then again, so far it doesn't look like EXE is planning to expand all too soon. So he's pretty much just going for all out aggression mode now. Going over there with uh, three marines and two hellions and getting the Banshee to follow it up. I think he might force a cancel on this command center. Uh, might get finished as well. We'll see. Oh, it's gonna be so close! Wow! That was the closest command center finish I've ever seen. There's the bunker already being placed down. I think Strelok is going to have to move this command center. There's no way to close this off right now. SCVs will have to be pulled. Wow, Strelok is completely unprepared, but he does have two Hellions available. There's two Hellions coming out of VNXE, and ooh, all of the Vs are, SCVs are clumped up. He gets some decent shots off, but uh, his SCVs were, uh, his Hellions were also hit already. Uh, but he's doing some solid micro. We'll get rid of one of the Hellions at least. We should get rid of one of the Hellions. No, repairs are going on. Wow, Strelok, he truly is a beast. And. Do we have a cancel on the Banshee? Nope, it's making its way over there. And I think Strelok, yeah, he knows what's up. Already going for the missile turret. Should get finished, but just to make sure that he stays alive, he still saved up a little bit of energy on this command center. So, oh, what a blow to EXE. Losing this, on, like his little army, losing the Banshee, that really hurts quite a bit. 
Uh, he's still ahead of workers, but not by that much. And Strelok can just start mining and start using those mules now. Since he knows, okay, I got rid of the Banshee and um, my opponent definitely doesn't have a second one ready. Raven is there though for EXE already and a single siege tank, but these helmets, they can just dash past the siege tank if they want to, but not gonna do that. Doesn't want to risk anything here. He really wants to keep those aliens alive for possible defense later on. And there we go, the Vikings are there as well, just in case that we might see a second Banshee. And if not, it just helps against drops if uh, EXE is going to go for that again. But looks like he's not going to go for those shenanigans right away. It's the 1-1-1 one, one, one again. This is pretty much um, similar to the first game we had. So I was right in that it predicted a return to the first game. But um, this time around, EXE not doing all that much with his Banshee. And last time I think he got at least a couple of kills. And Strelok is doing this a little bit differently as well. Um, he's going for a Raven of his own, which we saw last game. But he's also going for the second fast factory a little bit earlier. And going for the reactor here on the barracks. Which we might see a swap. I think he's gonna swap that for the starport and then go into medivac production again. Go for these mass mass hellions again. But probably at least get a couple more siege tank out this time. He knows what happened to him in the first game. He knows there is a timing where EXE can just roll over, get a lot of siege tanks and uh, just kill his army, which is mostly based on hellions. And looks like EXE gearing to do just that. A lot of siege tanks already, a couple of vikings, so he should be in a good spot. We have ear sur superiority, no, it's just two vikings, uh, single banshee, raven, maybe if you can focus out this viking early on. Nope, uh, not gonna happen. And there's the scan, and Sterlock sees what's going on. Uh, Banshee's got a couple of shots on the, on the raven, but not quite taken it out. Well, defense zone was taken out though, and he hasn't. Uh, yeah, he hasn't lost any any health on his siege tanks. That's a pretty good spot for his siege tanks. But air superiority does go to Strelok. And she helps out quite a bit as well. And I think did Strelok just land one of his, one of his Vikings? No, he lost one of them as well. Still a good spot for EXE so far. Strelok needs to get a couple of siege tanks out or get rid of all of the air that EXE has. He's producing a lot more Vikings and it's, it's looking okay for him. But once these siege tanks get closer and closer to his middle line, this is just gonna spell doom. There's the Banshee cloaking up. I don't think... oh yeah, he did scout it out. And the auto turrets are helping quite a bit as well. Siege tanks are just getting closer and closer. I think EXE just realized, okay, I'm losing air superiority now, but I do have high ground vision already. And he's just uh, pushed into a corner right there. So if I just siege up again and again, get closer and closer, but this is a good position for EXE. I don't think these SCVs are gonna make it to the back of these all these siege tanks. But they're doing a lot of splash on themselves. Still, this is EXE just waltzing through. There's the GG, and EXE, he does make it into the semifinals. I wasn't quite wrong, just two more games. Needed two more games to make it happen. Wow.